Um, um, meeting to order. Good. Okay, I'll call the finance committee meeting to order. And we have a quorum. Yep. And I'm Jack Davy, and I will call the CIPC meeting to order at uh, 5:01 p.m. I don't know if I have a. Do I have a? Do we have a quorum now? One, two. Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Okay. Denise, Jeff, myself, and you, Jack. There's right. um, four. Uh, oh, and here comes Mark. So there's five of us. And uh, Ken has a uh, school committee meeting. He's not going to be with us. I don't know about Skip. Okay. All right. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Thank you for coming. Hello. So I think the only topic this evening is to go through this capital. Right. So I can share some information to start with, if this is helpful. Um, so um, John Pareski put this together, but Brenda um, talked about it last week. So here's the revenue that um, is predicted for next year. This includes the 2.5% increase and any growth and um, an estimate of local receipts and everything. So total revenue for next year is 16,603,632 is the number that we're working with. Budget that we have um, that is proposed or requested is 16,482,923 without any capital items. So what is available from the remaining revenue for capital is 120,700. And in the process of discussions last week, there are a couple of revolving funds. One is a municipal building fund, which I believe is money left over from the town hall, the current town hall, right? Right. Okay. Um, the second is the Capital Stabilization Fund. Oh, I spelled stabilization wrong. Anyways, um, which is really not, when we set this up was to build it up to a million dollars. So we have one more input to it that would bring it up to a million dollars. And then the thought was that it would stay at about a million dollars and it would be used, it would sort of fluctuate up and down and be used to stable the amount of money that we spent on capital. But it is a fund whose intended purpose is to support capital. Um, and then the third item is the SCEMS Rent Stabilization Fund, which is um, going to be used for a couple of these. What is 13,500 in there right now, but Brenda was just telling us that, um, that at the end of this fiscal year, it will be up to 81,000. Um, because there's more funding that is in hand right now. So that is where we are with funding. Um, so this file is the list of requests for capital um, projects that went through the Capital Improvement Planning Committee I took their list and just sorted, took the ones for this fiscal year and sorted them by the priority that was voted by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Okay. And this is the, so is if you look at these two columns, G and H, this is the recommended amount in priority order. Started talking about um, where that funding, oh shoot, I've got the wrong one open. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to open the one that I actually sent. No, that's the one. All right. Well, shoot, my additional work isn't. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here we are 
again, G and H are the capital projects sorted in priority order. And then there are different places they could come from. So if we run down this list, wastewater treatment plant is debt excluded. The roadside mower is reimbursed by the utility, so that's not out of our pockets. Um, these two are SCEMS projects, asphalt paving and exhaust system. Those will come from that SCEMS rent stabilization fund, which um, will be at 81,000, you said, Brenda? Yeah. Yes. Right, so that there's enough in there to cover those two projects. And then, and then we just start working down the list and figure out what we want to fund and where we want the funds to come from. Um, so, uh, this is Trevor. I, I just, uh, for a second, I had a conversation with Darius uh, today, and uh, while, while we couldn't guarantee anything, I believe that he is going to request from the Frontier School Committee meeting tonight to um, pay for the gym and atrium duct cleaning and curtain, you know, that, that warrant article. Mm -hmm. uh, out of e and funds. So we may have some good news on that in a, in a short amount of time, but, you know, just wanted to kind of, I knew we were all coming together today. So um, I don't have a yes on that yet because we don't know what the vote will be, but I know that he's going to ask that of them. Oh, that would help. Yeah. Gives us a little bit more. Yeah, that would bring it up to 136,000 basically. E and D, is that what? Yep, yep. Excess and deficiency, yep. yep. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Okay. Like their free cash. Yes. Right. Yeah, so that's a good possibility. So if we take that, that was on the budget, right? Correct. So that makes us 135, 951. Um, so, I don't really know what the plan is. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we just start running down this list, yep. the multi purpose loader for public works was originally at 105. He can do a five year lease to own, I think it was five years. Um, yep which is essentially 20,000 a year. The HVAC system is 100,000. You add all these up, we're well over our um, 135,000. And did, did we feel like that, that HVAC, Carolyn might be a good, or Casey might be a good possibility for I, the ARPA? I know we have uh, it in there as a note. Um, I think it is, I think it will qualify without question. And we were gonna do it anyway. So I think it was a good expenditure of our ARPA funding. Obviously um, we need as a select board to vote that, but um, I would 100% support that. Uh, that That is one-time money for a one-time right. project. Right. Would you say it again, Carol, when it didn't? Uh, the ARPA money, is for COVID related expenses. This is air filtration and the air circulation. Um, you know, the police station will not pass DPH inspection this year under the current system. So we have to replace this if we are going to get certified. And I feel very strongly having gone to at least three of the ARPA meetings, even though we don't have 100% guidance yet, um, I would say that this would qualify for the ARPA money. And the ARPA money is the determination of the ARPA money is decided by your municipal, um, you know, CEO, whether it's select board or mayor or whatever. So I would advocate for the use of ARPA funding for that HVH system um, in the police station. And there is at least $100,000 that's available? 
or would be uh, we are getting half we are getting half uh in next week or the week after and that's about six hundred thousand. and then we'll okay. get and we'll get the other half at the end of the year or the beginning of next year so are you, are you saying that this doesn't need to be voted on at town meeting i think we need to vote on it for town meeting but the funding okay uh, we well, could as a select board pre-vote that before town meeting so so we can confidentially i mean confidently say to the town the select board supports this i mean this is just my opinion we have not as a select board discussed this kind of stuff but we have discussed arpa guidelines at at their select board meetings and the and all of us i feel have consensus that one-time monies should you know, support one time at uh, projects. Mm. And and so I I mean, I would be advocating for ARPA money to cover this. Okay. So for clarity's sake, ARPA funds are grant funds. And generally, the select board is authorized to utilize those funds. In this case, we were waiting for Treasury to give us some interpretation about it. But like Carolyn says, they don't seem to be balking too much on the question of ventilation. Right. Anything related to um, air quality seems to be going to be covered or be eligible. Jack, you have a question or a comment? Uh, well, I just have a, a comment. Um, the, so the, the hundred thousand dollars is for both engineering and the installation of the system. And it's a little unclear to me from memory, you know, what part of it's engineering, but, but obviously the engineering would have to be done first. Um, and then it would have to go out to bid and, uh, contractors would, would have to install it. And, and I'm wondering if perhaps the actual installation might go into the next fiscal year. This is just, just a comment and a kind of a question. Well, Which I think fiscal we year are you to... asking about? What's that? Which fiscal year, FY21 or 22? No, 20, 20, well, we're Three. 23. Oh so, no, we'll have it done. Wonder, I just think it'll be done if... before that. Oh, What's we that? have to have it done, Jack, so that we can get certified. Our jail sale will not pass inspection. So we have to have it done this year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the, so anyway, I guess my comment is that that uh, the hundred thousand is an is an estimate. Yeah, uh, it and, is. And the engineering has not actually not been done to which would be necessary to to give us a really firm firm figure. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But if we utilize ARPA funds, even if it goes over that hundred thousand, we should have the money to be able to do that. Okay. If I recall um, John's submission, I think the engineering was right below 10,000. And ARPA will pay for the engineering portion of it as well. well. That's part of the installation. You can't have an installation. You can't, yeah, you have, have to engineer it. You have to engineer it. You have to design it. Yeah. Before they can build it. Um, I, I just want to voice one. Oops. No, you were. Yep, sorry. You I just want to voice one go. concern that um, could there be any problem stemming from the fact that this was a, shall we call it a pre existing condition, as my health insurance company likes to refer to things, when they don't want it's to pay? It's actually for them? become more exacerbated through COVID because of the ventilation requirements that really became apparent in a similar way as the schools. Okay, so the fact that we're using this to fix something that we should have fixed years ago isn't a problem. I wouldn't, I, I think it's, I think it'll pass the straight face test on this because right. of how COVID impacted the police station and the police operations as essential workers. From a public health point of view, we have to have better ventilation and better circulation. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't operate efficiently or effectively um, and the air quality is poor so oh, yeah no one's disputing that <laughs> so if, if we were so at the, if the, 
slide that. Guys, oh, go ahead. Do you guys want to vote that now, or do you need to save it for another meeting? Uh, I guess we could vote that, Trevor. Trevor you, want, you, you want to wait for David? Yeah, I, uh, David will be here later. Yeah, okay. uh, we could do that. Um, so with that moved over, it looks like we might be able to cover the other items, at least on that list that we pulled over. Um, so we all agreed that Deerfield Elementary was very organized and laid out and that we wanted yeah. to support their plan. Um, yeah. Senior needs assessment was felt to be um, important. Um, Before you go too far past the uh, elementary school, can I ask you a question? How much money do we have at this point in time in the revolving fund? The general stable, the capital stabilization? The revolving fund. What, what revolving, what revolving fund? fund? For the elementary school? Well, there's one no, just for the for the school. Uh, which one are you talking about? School choice. What I, what I'm asking, Brenda, is how much money do we have in the finance committee revolving fund? Oh. What's the balance? You're talking about the reserve fund. Well, I'm sorry, reserve fund. Oh. My mistake. Yeah, I think it's like ninety-eight. That's okay. Um, let me take a look, but I think it's in the nineties. Yeah, ninety-six, I think, or something like that. Um. Yeah, we have ninety six thousand at this. Okay. Point. There's there's going to be a request to use nine hundred of it today, but so as, as we work our way down toward the end of the year, if we start bumping into uh, debt problems, I certainly would have no objection to taking a few of these smaller items and taking the money from this year's reserve fund to pay for those funds. Realizing obviously if we take the money from the reserve fund, we won't have that money in in the free cash next year. Next year, yeah. Right. Any other comments on the two Deerfield Elementary School line items? No. no. So the next one is the senior needs assessment and feasibility. Again, I, I think it's really important that we do this just so that we're informed. We have to make informed decisions. Uh, I mean, we have multi-million dollar decisions that are resting on having more data. Okay. Um, the next one is the municipal offices repairs. The original request was for 60,000. Deerfield Academy has provided some labor and helped out and be a, made us made it so we can bring that estimate down. Um, and, and there was also the suggestion that we use that the fund, the municipal building fund, mm -hmm. pay for any other repairs. Did that we makes know, sense. Did we know what else we had on the list for you know for the current year or next coming year we want to do here it's based on what some of the repairs were outlined in the grla yeah. response the evaluation of the building and it's t it's spread over five years the request starts that. lower and ends a little bit higher um, but it would allow us to address some of the other issues we may have i would say that about a little less than ten thousand is what Deerfield Academy has contributed at this point to fixing the side of fixing the um, ramp. ramp and then there's going to be some work on the side of the building as well. Yeah. So if we dropped it to 50, so, uh, I mean, revise the request. Um, you do have the municipal building fund which is actually leftover money from the sale of the old town hall on park street mm -hmm. and honestly that's probably the best source of that money that money's been sitting there for over 20 yeah. years right brenda yeah a long time dls likes us to to cycle these reserve funds out mm -hmm. and utilize them and this is one of the better uses i would think for it because it directly relates to the 
from the town hall to the town hall. Can we take all $52,118 plus whatever interest might be thrown in there and put it up there and then at the end of next year, if there's anything left over, let's just roll it over into free cash. Right. Yeah, that makes sense, Skip. Great idea. All right, next item is the building inspections permitting software. There's some questions. So Brenda, so we wanted to use CARES Act funds for this. And the longer it takes with FEMA, the harder it is for me to pull the trigger on this because we could use it right now. I mean, it's that critical to get information in and out of the, the building department for various types of permits. It would certainly streamline some of the activities that we do. But with COVID, it became very apparent that we need to be able to communicate um, more effectively, more quickly. And so we, we watched that account. Brenda and I have been watching that for quite some time. And you know, the feds don't seem to want to do this. It's about 15.5 was the estimate I got from Patriot. We actually got three estimates. That was the lowest. And I had talked about this several months ago. But honestly, I'd like to be able to pull the trigger on this because it really is a critical thing. That's an essential service like police response. So, and it just so happens construction trades have been the busiest we've seen them in years. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that's holding me back is finding out what FEMA is going to pay for because then we're out of money. Because we gave, Brenda, correct me if I'm wrong, we gave over $200,000 in our CARES Act funds to the schools, correct? I would say yes. Okay. So we were generous with the schools, but we do need, and I said this to Shelly Pareda in an email, we do need to remember that we have town functions that have got to be more effective. I'm prepared to use CARES Act money as soon as I can figure out whether FEMA's gonna pay for what they said they were gonna pay for. It's sitting in this, some circular file, I think. Which CARES Act money is left? We paid for $15,000 of what we've submitted. That would leave us enough for this. And then. Right. Do we know how much CARES money is just, is, is kind of, I know we're waiting because of uh, MEMA, right? Well, uh, let's put it this, this way. We've spent about 440000 and we were given 444,000 from okay. CARES. Okay. So, so we're, if we're FEMA covers done. some of that, then we can spend more. And if they don't cover any of it, which I, I can't imagine they're not gonna cover something. Yeah. Um, but we, we have not gotten a definitive answer. Yep. We, we just when was the last time is. that we touched base with um, the, our FEMA MEMA rep? I've touched base with them every two weeks since this started and <laughs> since we did our second submission. Okay. So and it's in, it really is in circular review land. There's seven steps that FEMA has to take. One project is in step four and the other project is in step two. And then when the feds came down with the change to cover a hundred percent of certain items that seemed to slow the entire process down. Okay. The issue for me is I don't want to cost the town any money if I can help right. it. Right. But well, I do see the need. Well, I think we should just set aside that for the care the CARES Act money. And I, I mean, I think it will be spent for that or can be spent for that. Because we will get some money. Oh yeah, it's yeah. definitely an accessibility issue and a and a essential service. Yeah. Well, that is, that is one of those things where if we do overspend CARES Act money in, you know, a small portion of that, that is something where we could use the reserve fund. Right. Under that difference, if in right. fact it isn't going to be covered. Right, Skip? The only, the only thing that I would am concerned about there is that we not dip into next year's reserve fund, but we use the current reserve fund if possible. That, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I certainly have no problems using uh, FY, was it 21, uh, the 90,000, 95,000 that we have in there now. 
All right, I'm going to get on that tomorrow. I'll just write myself a note. So I have a question I don't really want to ask. Is anybody taking minutes? <laughs> Not me, Julie. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you volunteered, Julie. I'm taking minutes for my committee. <laughs> Can you add our name to the top? <laughs> there you go. It's Good. being recorded, Julie. Yeah. So. so I have to come up with minutes though, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you don't have to come up with them right now. <laughs> It's a lot of fun to uh, to uh, yeah, watch. If I don't, the then I have again. to watch the meeting. <laughs> right. Exactly. <Again. laughs> Enjoy the show twice. All right. Um, so we are down to this website conversion, and I wrote down not going to do this last time we talked about that. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> I I I think I would like you to please remove that. We're going to okay. try to figure out some other way to handle. Will be handled otherwise or something. It's you, already in contracted oh, services. We right. moved it. it. It'll be we a five-year contract to get that completed now instead. Right. I said so we have so many complaints okay. about our website. I don't want to say that we're not going to do it. I'll have <laughs> my phone okay. will be okay. ringing. <laughs> so it's not going to be a capital. Okay, right. right. Next is it, the file server. Go ahead. Sorry. When it get moved to contract of services, did we change the omnibus budget for that? Yeah. Is it in that? It was okay. voted, it was voted with it in. I believe it uh, added about eleven thousand to our contracted services budget for this year and for the next five, four years. Um, so that any other questions on this um, website conversion? No. Okay, next item is the town office file server. So Skip, I'm going to ask you a question. I can make that go away as soon as I sign a quote for that. Um, and we could do a transfer request for that $12,000 server that would take it off of capital for next year. It's up to, you know, it, it's up to the finance committee as to whether they would be amenable to that. Um, it is something we could use. It would be helpful if we could get it in place sooner rather than later. Um, but to your point earlier, um, I, I would ask whether finance would be amenable to doing that now as opposed to waiting until after the beginning of the fiscal year. That would certainly be a, a, an easy um, an easy thing because we already have a line item for IT hardware, so it could easily fit into that and be overspent and then reserve fund transfer request. And it would help you to get that done sooner than fiscal year? It would, we've got a, We've actually got a sandbox, what they call sandbox, an old server. And so this will help us upgrade, you know, our, our functionality, but also would be useful as we transition. It's easier if you're not transitioning everything all at once at the beginning of the fiscal year. So I'm going to take it off the capital. I'm going to put use FY21 reserve fund. Is that, I guess we, we need to go through and vote all this stuff. Once yeah. is, that in con, is that in contracted services? Would that normally be in contracted services? The server? Uh, yes. Um, no, because that that's a hardware. IT hardware. That's a hardware mm -hmm. item. It's a hardware item. It's just the price tag. The initial price tag was much higher than that. When I got the quote back, it, it I think it was 35,000 as an item that was already in your capital plan. And when I got the revised quote back, it was 12. It's just the plan was voted by the time I got the information back. Oh, so the, so the budget might be half of that. 
half of 35. Well, it was initially 35 and right. then it became 12. So, right. Okay. You know. I, I'm confused what's new, but um, you said that the file service is, oh, wait a minute, what are we talking about? It went to contracted services. The website conversion? Yeah. I look at account 159, 54, 10, and I don't see it. No, it's, we budgeted it, we put it into the budget for FY22, John in contracted well, services, the website conversion. That's what I'm talking about, FY22. I don't see it. It's listed as uh, website hosting, uh, excuse me. Um, I think it's the first line, network maintenance, AV backup email. Is that one from 15 to 27? No, it's under, no. It's, it's, it's under dot com and it's website hosting slash updates. That's Civic Plus, that's, that's our website. So that's only eleven thousand dollars. It's, it's only eleven thousand dollars. Correct. Right. So We're doing a five-year contract. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready for asphalt sidewalk repairs? <laughs> Ready for concrete. <laughs> Anybody want to talk about this? Um, we we really need to get moving on on this, and it you know this is a project that is too large, I think, for a hey, do we have enough free cash left over? That's why I kind of wanted to have that conversation about using. Um, you know, some debt or some principal in debt or figure out, you know, a plan to kind of pay off larger projects that we can't really pull off in a one year, we have an extra 500,000 left over, um, you know, or, or, you know, eating up a full half of our, our you know, stabilization account. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would love to look for grants and find other ways to do this. I just, we're probably not ready at this moment for it, but we've got to figure out a way to um, be able to tackle larger projects like this. We'll have one, you know, we'll have a, a large project similar to this that we'll need to deal with, with, um, you know, Pine Nook Road. Uh, we have some sewer going up through there, but the main road needs to be rebuilt as well. So there'll be projects of that size or larger um, that we'll need to deal with in the next few years. I just don't know really how to how to budget that, or if we just debt exclude it, like a if we're building a new school or something. Well, that Trevor, that's what it is. We need to borrow the money. Yes. See, if we're if we're not taking it out of out of funds that are available funds, then we the only other way we have is to borrow it. And then the question is, how are we going to pay for it? Yep. And Unfortunately, there have been those occasions for whatever reason that the decision was made that we weren't going to ask for debt exclusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would strongly like to urge the selectmen, uh, anytime they're borrowing, they really need to consider using debt exclusion. Yeah, I agree. I totally that. agree. This is a good use yeah. of that. And what you do is you come up with a, I'm going to say the evil word. So bear with me, John Presky. <laughs> Um, you come up with a rolling plan of projects that you want to do, set aside a certain amount or set in your head a certain amount of money, and then um, do a debt exclusion vote to handle that rolling type of projects is, is mm -hmm. how I recall another town I know of that did it. And then we could pull, say, 100000 a year from capital stabilization, 100000 a year, you know, from wherever else you know we could think of other ways but i just thought we could use a stabilization account to pay for some of that payback each year what or a seed money see, for not, the project makes more sense trevor why not make really it a, debt is is an omnibus item why not make it a line item and just i mean if there's always going to be something then you know just make it a line item <clears throat> We, we, we have 
we have the situation that exists right now. It's the school roof. Yeah. And this is basically the same thing as far as paying for it. Yeah. Uh, when you purchase back the property from uh, New England Bakers, the only objection that I had to that was that you didn't use debt exclusion, and I wish you had. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to pay for it one way or the other. Right. So if we have the fund sitting in an account and we have enough money to cover it, why we... Um, use debt and raise taxes in order to cover it? Why would we not use this and then replenish the stabilization fund? Well, I just felt like, you know, we're going to wipe out that whole account, you know, between that project and once we get maybe a year or so from now, once we get to that other large project, we also have, you know, River Road that's, that's slipping into the river as well. We've got some, we have some big projects that we have the library coming up, you know, there's there's just a lot, and I was thinking, you know, some of the smaller items, not not like eight million dollars, but like you know, half a million, we could pull, you know, each year from this account a bit, um, so it wasn't wiping it out completely. But I'm fine either way. I just feel like, you know, it, it would allow us some years to do multiple small things still using some of that money. Which money are you talking about? I'm talking about the capital stabilization. We also have okay. a general stabilization as well. That's, you know, I forget. So what many. he's talking about is creating a borrowing for larger projects that could be debt excluded. I, uh, I agree with Yes, Steve. I agree with that too. Um, but for smaller projects, utilize the capital stabilization as the funding source right. for some of the smaller other things that might come out. These infrastructure projects that he's talking about are very expensive. You know, the last time we fixed River Road, it was a million, it was almost a million dollar project. And we can't guarantee that we can get grants, but you can guarantee some stability in the effect that it can have, that the cost for these projects can have if you build your, your borrowing around an ongoing payout to do these projects on an annual basis. Yeah, but make it a line, as I said, make it a line item because frankly you know it seems odd to be going into debt to repave the sidewalks you know that seems like something that should be under just general maintenance that is budgeted all the time because there will always be sidewalks that need repairing somewhere in town and there will always be roads that need patching and and that's these true don't seem like these are maintenance not capital expenditures really building a capital, capital investment in infrastructure that's right. the difference I see. Well, Jim, is it's a capital investment. Jim, to answer your question, this is a maintenance item, even though it's a uh, five hundred thousand, and we're going to pay for it. I'm just throwing numbers out here. We're going to pay for it at a hundred thousand dollars a year for the next five years. Yes. So it it, it is in effect doing exactly what you said. We've just used. Uh, you know, borrowing to do it. And that allows us to take advantage of uh, savings that you would accrue by doing a larger project than one fell swoop. So that, that would offset the, the fact that we will have to pay, you know, interest on the borrowing. It's True. Yes. Okay. Last week, we talked about maybe using ARPA funds as a matching fund for another grant to do this instead. Is that, has that gone to the wayside? We don't know what we'll be able to use the ARPA funds for in terms of infrastructure. They t the infrastructure that I read about, and this is again, where we need treasury to come to fall off the fence. Um, the infrastructure that they seem to be funding through ARPA is more along the lines of water infrastructure, not mm -hmm. pavement infrastructure. There may be, and I think Carolyn knows more about this than I do because she's had more of an ear to the ground on it. There may be another infrastructure bill that comes through that is more 
focused on streets and sidewalks as opposed to other types of infrastructure. The ARPA money, the ARPA money infrastructure projects that they will support have to have economic um, impact or positive activity to regenerate um, economic activity. So we had thought maybe we would use some of our ARPA money toward the Leary lot because the Leary lot would generate downtown economic activity and certainly would connect with Berkshire Brew, what they're trying to do. And then you can make the difference up um, under the MVP grant to do the greening, you know, landscaping kind of thing that is um, climate change and very attractive for downtown. The infrastructure bill that is coming, that is working through Congress is for sewer treatment plants, water quality issue, you know, water quality um, improvements, stuff like that, roads, highways. So certainly that infrastructure uh, plan coming through will allow us to apply um, for several different projects. However, that's still working its way through Congress. We don't know when the funding, we don't have a, a definitive timeline on the funding and we don't know how much is gonna be available. It will be very, very competitive because everybody and his brother's got millions of dollars of infrastructure, no matter how little or how big you are. So I would say that we're gonna to try to do our infrastructure grant applications, but how successful we be, I don't know. So for this for this sidewalk thing is is the idea that maybe we would just kind of hold on this for a uh, fall um, special town meeting warrant or you know a ballot measure to debt exclude and then by by the fall we might know where um, where some of the infrastructure bill might be coming from you know it sounds like we're not going to be able to tackle it right away um, unless we just go out and borrow for it but we you know. I would not. I would not say that this is ARPA. Eligible. I don't think so either. But I think it may be infrastructure, and we might know by you know. I think they're hoping by July to get it through the House and Senate. We might know by by the fall. We'll see where free cash is. We'll be able to uh, maybe see where that has come down, and then at our you know we could have a fall warrant article or ballot for a debt exclusion of doing the sidewalks. I would definitely say that we're going to have a special town meeting in the fall, no matter what, um, mm -hmm. fix, fix these budget issues. There's too much, there's too much impact, potential impact from ARPA money, CARES Act money, and uh, infrastructure bill. We will have to adjust something, I'm sure. So at this time, we'll just pass over this. May I, may I throw Jeff, out a hang comment, on. please? Jeff, Jeff, hang on. Jack Davey had his hands okay. up, and then you can go. Um, well, I, I, to, I, to Julie's point, I don't understand why we would go out and borrow money for a project like this when we have the money. The money's been taxed. It's in our capital stabilization savings account. Why wouldn't we use it? And the next project, if we have to borrow for it, fine. Um, or maybe the next project qualifies for a grant or federal funds or whatever, but I just don't understand why we, why we have a capital state capital stabilization fund if if we're if we're never going to use the money. The taxpayers have been taxed, and why is it just sitting there and not being used? And, and what criteria do we use? This this question has been asked over and over again. What criteria? are we using to use this use this money i mean you know it's great to have that piggy bank but the, the purpose of it is to take the pressure off the budget and to and to pay for capital projects to actually have the money so we don't have to borrow and i'm i'm not an expert on, on these things i you know but it what's the criteria when, when, well, I think the, the, the idea was to get it to a million, right? And that was, I guess, a shot in the dark, but and so we aren't quite there yet. So I think that's well, we're why not it's quite, nobody really spent anything from it, right? We're not, we're not quite there because 
COVID happened. Um, yeah. A lot of projects, but you know, and I, I know the goal is to be there. So why not use it? And then next year, if uh, things get better, we can replenish it. One of the issues to keep in mind, Jack, is it's not just about the sidewalks. If you're going to do a walkability plan that encompasses the common, the town buildings, the Leary lot, downtown, it makes sense to come up with a whole vision of it. And it's something the board's been tackling for the last several months. I'm the sidewalks I'm is one in favor piece. of that. I'm definitely in, in favor of that, but I, I know. And so but, but what I'm I just... wanted to be able to do is get get the have you guys especially capital see the flavor of the kinds of projects that are coming up because it builds directly into how you manage the plan as capital over the next five years and this is one element we weren't ready to really give you anything about leary lot and common because we were still in the there's still a lot of planning going on around um Maybe this isn't the time to bring this up, but I, I think the elephant in the room is the library. And, you know, I would. There's two. <laughs> I call it one elephant, but one big elephant is the library. And I, you know, I listened to the library director's presentation, and maybe I missed this, but the grant, the potential grant is. 50% of the original estimate. Yeah. Right. We were told back when that the that uh, most likely the the uh, estimate that estimate would increase by 15% a year. Definitely. So now so if you do the math, now we're up to like 12 million dollars for the total project and we're only going to get 4 million from the state. We're going to have to come up with 8 million ourselves if we go forward with that. They they that did they did have, uh, you know, escalated costs in that estimate, but you were, you're right. We're probably getting to the end of that as when it was, you know, originally estimated and with the cost of materials now, it's, it's probably over. You're right. So, I mean, I'm in, I'm in favor of upgrading the library, but we're going to have to borrow $8 million. That will have to be basically a separate thing approved by the town meeting yes. I mean, yes. right around that. And there's going to be a lot of that's not our decision to make. <laughs> right. There's a lot of support from the community and there, you know, the community is the, 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 the town meet, the special town meeting is going to vote for it in my view. Uh, but well, uh, unless we maybe come up with another idea, like, and I, one idea I had was to combine the scene, a new senior center with the library. So that you, so that you would have um, uh, savings in, uh, in not duplicating, for example, but building two rest, two sets of restrooms rather than one. You'd have one HVAC system rather than two. Um, I, you know, I'm just throwing this out. It's something I've been thinking about and, and kind of worrying about. Um, we, uh, but it, so to, to your point, Casey, to have a, uh, a um, overall plan for all of these projects. I'm I'm really in favor of it, and it and we might be able to save a lot of money if we were somehow able to combine them. Leverage. And so the one thing that I recall Candace saying is that the library um, building. I think I forget whether they call it a building authority or not, but mm -hmm. they actually don't allow any combination in a similar right. way as right. the school does. So that's that's right. the difficulty that leveraging makes sense. It, on the one hand, leveraging makes sense. On the other hand, sometimes we don't have that accessibility through these right. grant programs. Uh, well, yeah. I just wonder if Jack, if, if, Jack if it, Trevor and I went to the MMA conference last, not this January, but the January before, and we reached out and we offered Deerfield to be a pilot so we could combine the senior center with the library. And we had buy-in from the state. We actually, Casey's first day or first couple of days, they came out for a visit and it was all exciting. Everything was happening. And um, then COVID hit. I don't know what happened to the person. She either quit That's or something. Job. She left. She, she left. left. She left. So, there is no pilot. 
there is no and there was no movement on the program like carolyn said and right there's and, no you know, it's the we're back program's to ground totally zero cool. even though we had put in a huge amount of hours to do the exact same thing and be a pilot example of how you could do this in a combination for a small town but guess what we're back to either the library or the senior center and not both well unless we go our own way unless there's right. Well, if we, if if it's a twelve million dollar expansion, and we're only getting, you know, four million dollars, it makes sense that we will just decide not to participate and we build it ourselves to do whatever we want. I mean, it would actually save us money. But um, we might save the four million dollars by having one facility. That's right, and that's right. what I mean. Um, we might find out that it is better to go by ourselves than to um, accept the state money. It's no different than the school roof project. We could have done the school roof for cheaper by ourselves. Yep. Sorry. So how do we explore doing that? Committee work. Yep. We do need some information on senior services. And so I put out a call to see if we had any movement on that grant that we had explained was part of our request for the seat that $42,500 amount and it's still being considered they haven't said no um but a big piece of understanding what your seniors need is for them to tell you some of that so that initial survey work helps us get the data to decide that jack Poor Jeff has something to say, and we keep interrupting yeah, him. Yeah, sorry, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. I find this entertaining. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, a couple of things. The with the library situation, mm -hmm. I, I've thought about this myself. Is that we may find it in, in coming down the road that it may be more cost effective if we go our own way and not accept the grant uh that's to be determined obviously uh you know hopefully hopefully when when we find out and we find out the real numbers we'll pause and actually take a real good look at this and figure out uh what is the most cost effective way uh if if we do go on our own obviously there's some there's some uh advantages for the overall town uh if it's grant then it is gonna it is gonna make it very difficult to do the library and other projects at the same time uh i think i think it'll be very interesting also to see uh what happens as far as the church and uh once we get the feasibility study back uh or the assessment uh to see if it's even cost effective to do the church uh my my thought process is is who knows i mean you could if need be in the church every, you know a lot of people want to try to keep the church well you you run a you run a walkway quarter from the library to the church and reinvest the church and it can serve serve a couple of purposes uh, the other thing coming back to the to the uh, capital plan, and I, I see uh, both sides here with this, is that trying to build, as Trevor and Casey had mentioned, trying to build a plan and to do the uh, kind of like a debt exclusion borrowing in, in tapping the uh, stabilization fund for a few dollars you know whether it be a hundred or whatever and make a commitment five year uh to pay that back but i see jack's point too is that you could actually if you make a commitment you could actually borrow i mean you could actually spend uh, the 500 out of the capital improvement plan and i have a hard time saying this because uh I would like to keep the capital improvement plan as long as we can and get it up to about that million dollars. But I do see where we could actually spend half a million dollars and get this done as long as, and you know, 
and obviously try to get grant money to reduce that. But if we were going to do that, if we're going to make a commitment to pay back $100,000 a year for a $500,000 debt exclusion loan, then let's make a, a commitment to the capital plan that we will request, whether it be $200,000 every year going forward, if you were to take that $500,000 out until you got it back up to that million dollar area. So in, so in effect, we borrow from ourselves, right? Right, we borrow from ourselves, Jack, right. is what it would be. So right. it'd be more cost effective. It wouldn't cost us as much money, but we would have to be willing to make that commitment. We can't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to say, well, if we have enough free cash at the end of the year, we'll put some money into the capital stabilization. Because as we all know, the capital stabilization plan for several years prior to the last four or five years, it was just forgotten, never happened. So if we could make that commitment to make sure that happened, as Jack said, we would basically be borrowing against ourselves and we wouldn't have to pay the interest. So, but we would have to make that commitment to the stabilization fund for an annual basis, whether it be a four or five year period. Well, just a couple my, of thoughts there. My only concern with that, and I, I would love to do that too, but here we are with like only 135,000 available in, at the end of the year. So where do we where do we get the 250 or 200 each year to put back in there? We can't even set aside 250 this year. I and I agree with you, Trevor. That's that's why I said you would have to try to make it a commitment that you're going to be able to pay, pay yourself every year. Yeah. And, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to pay back a uh, hundred thousand dollars to wherever for the debt exclusion, then we just got to make that commitment to pay the stabilization X amount of dollars every year. Yeah. That's true. So, and I, I hear what you're saying, Trevor, because I, I, I agree with you and uh, in, in Casey too, on, yep. you know, we've got some big projects coming down the road and try to develop a, a method here yep. uh, to pay it. So. To some extent we would be leveraging our, what what is put aside in capital stabilization to meet the needs, other needs, but try to focus on some of these larger infrastructure projects through borrowing in an attempt to get them done instead of mm. having them sit there on the capital plan and and not get done which eventually mm. is is more than one person in the meeting has mentioned is costing us money long term i think yeah and debt exclusion is a good way to to do that brenda you it, can i speak brenda first and then you um I have a thought that came to mind as you were discussing using capital stabilization funds for this. The amount available that we're showing that 135,000, that's if we leave 300,000 in free cash at the end of the year. You don't have to leave 300,000 in free cash. Both of the last two years we've left um, one was 240,000, one was, I don't remember how much, but maybe if you really want to do this sidewalk project, maybe we use 100,000 out of free cash and then you would use the rest out of capital stabilization or 150 out of free mm -hmm. cash. Now some towns don't even get 300,000 in free cash for their total year. She's right. So, so that would be one way to do it. You would have a little less free cash next fall to do things, but if you want to get going on this sidewalk project, why not use some of what we have now? I do want to get going on the sidewalk project. So would say to mind, Trevor, we need to have a better, a bit of a plan here. Yep. Well, I was going to say, at this point in time, we don't have a plan for doing these. And I would just assume put this off until a fall town meeting. I'm gonna say, doesn't John Presky, doesn't go change ahead. anything. John Presky, go ahead. 
We've been putting it off and putting it off for years. I think it's time to do it. And to me, the question is, we have capital stabilization of 866000 Is the asphalt sidewalk repair project important enough that we use some of the capital stabilization money or save the capital stabilization money in case something more important might come along? That's to me, that's the decision. So I have a th I'm under the impression that in past years, we have left large capital. We've, we've spent a bunch of money in special town meetings in the fall and people are very unhappy about that. Um, so, I mean, I would lean towards go ahead and put it on this and use capital stabilization and word the, so Jim Cambius last week suggested wording the warrant article to say something like whatever thousand for this project, any funds not used or covered by grant go back to capital stabilization. Yeah. Skip, you don't seem to have a problem though with waiting until the fall. I, I don't have a problem waiting till the fall because I'm making an assumption that if we do a half million dollar project, we're gonna borrow the funds. I have a problem if the intent is to wait until the fall and then we do the pigs at the trough thing and we take every bit of free cash and we just really nearly spend it, um, which we have done at least in occasion in the past. So that's the, the argument. I do have a little bit of a problem with using the capital stabilization for this kind of, uh, to, to fund this. I mean, you know, we're talking about a half a million dollars. And last I knew we were able to do short-term borrowing at about 1%. Not even. And uh, so you're not looking at, at large numbers of uh, dollars in there for interest payments over a five-year period. It would, would amount to something in the neighborhood of 10 or 12 or $13,000 if we did a five year plan. Yep. Your bank if you for your borrow the money, right now. if you borrow the money and do the project, the cost between doing it now and five years from now is more, is, is many multiple times of what you would pay in interest because the interest right. is less than 1%. Correct. I just want to see a plan for this. Not only, not only just the sidewalks, what else are we going to do? At least the common, common, the common, the Elm Leary Street. lot, and the Leary lot would be an economic development um, point of, of uh, to collaborate and maybe leverage grants to help us. As far as the common, we also talked about some other things that I think we ought to throw in there too. Uh, so. Yeah, as far as the common, the 503,000 are all going to be in one year? Could or be. could it be spread out? It could be spread. It could it be, could be spread. The issue is, is if you don't get it done all at once, it can, you don't want to leave the sidewalks in a, in a place where they're not substantially complete. And it's an but estimate. You can do some of the sidewalks. You can do some of the sidewalks and leave some others. Sure. Absolutely. May I go back to the uh, sidewalks, the Leary lot, the common and that? Once again, as Skip was saying with the plan, uh, shouldn't we be uh, pursuing the streetscapes grant monies for those instead of us trying to take them on? Uh, it just it just would make sense to be able to get a, a plan developed on on those items sidewalk the common and uh, the Leary lot and go go after streetscapes monies as far as grants and get as you know get as much help as we can. That's that's a, we may have to wait. A little bit. You might. But we, what we really should do, and it's not something that I was able to say back in December, Jeff, 
but what we really should do is sort of seed money on developing this downtown project in its entirety. So more comprehensively, yep. like Skip said, we, we do have to deal with access issues and the Leary lot could be an economic development um, access point. We could create a much more walkable downtown and it's been discussed in different venues for quite some time. Pulling it together may, may be the thing that we should probably focus on instead of just, just looking at the sidewalks. Um, but in December, I didn't have the benefit of those conversations. And so this is where I appreciate all of you getting together and talking about it, because it does help refine how we can approach it. Um, it may be more worthwhile to consider putting this aside for now, but developing a project where we can, or a, a request so that we can ask for the seed money to get it shovel ready. That way we can pursue the streetscape and we can pursue complete streets and we can see if we can leverage these things together. That would make sense to me, uh, Casey, because, you know, and, and I know Trevor and I know there's an ad hoc committee that's worked very hard on the on the town common. But, you know, that that price for that has escalated up to roughly around three hundred thousand now. You know, I, I know people want something done. But <coughs> time if if the town doesn't have to lay out the total of 300,000 if right. we can again as you were just saying put the street uh put the town common the sidewalks the leary lot put those all together in a downtown development mm -hmm. come up with a specific plan get it shovel ready and then apply for those grants I, I think it would just be more cost effective for the town. Right. It would, I think just all in all, it would save us money. You're right. Yeah. And uh, I haven't said anything yet, but I'm about to. So the way I'm looking at it, we should probably put something like $1.5 million into a bundled project, uh, have it debt excluded and set up a system of paying it over a five to 10 year period out of capital stabilization. Uh, we can use that $1.5 million for matching grants or in other things, but there's a lot of things that we got to get rolling here. We can't keep on sitting on them. I know it's way out of the spectrum of what we've been talking about, but you know, I think once we start looking at all those projects put together, you're, you are at $1.5 million. Yeah. <clears throat> what are we saying? Why? What are we going to use the one million dollars of capital stabilization money for? That is. You have other projects. Talking about let's get a million at, dollars, but I go back to what Jack Davies said. You know, what's the criteria for using it? Well, we don't know. That's that I know of. I, I think we need to be no that. Listen to it. We did say again. Did. Sorry. Go ahead, Casey. Well, I have an answer. We need a we need financial policies that help us refine yeah. how we're going to approach this. And mm -hmm. it's I know it's not something that was really completed before, but I've seen it work very well in other other places. And so that's where you develop your criteria. And it's actually not the heaviest lift. You guys have a beginning. Um, really sitting down and refining over the summer what you would want to see for criteria could be helpful. And that plan can be adopted and you move forward functionally because the plan itself or financial policy itself that defines what your criteria are, it, it can be a functional changing document, which is often what it needs to be in order to really meet the needs of the town, but also meet the requirements as things get interpreted through grants and other funding sources and through DLS, let's be frank. They interpret things all the time. Um, it's a much more workable document and that can be where your criteria is. So since we're stumbling on that, I think that could be something that capital and finance and the select board could take on. And it, I won't say it isn't a, he a heavy lift. It's not necessarily heavy, it's a lift, but you guys are more than capable of getting this done in time for us to start looking at other capital projects down the line. May I 
may I respond to that just a little bit to go back to originally why this was established was there was a lot of times where we got short on free cash and we didn't have the money to do the capital projects, uh, whether they be projects and or equipment, assets, whatever the case may be. So the, the thought process was to try to establish a capital stabilization fund so uh, the items that would fall under capital stabilization, uh, the CIPC, wouldn't be getting kicked down the road all the time and end up with buildings now uh, that need major repairs instead of minor repairs uh, that your capital could cover. What we were trying to do was, uh, my understanding of it, we were trying to establish roughly about a million dollars into the capital plan and then as we went along and we came up short as far as any free cash, and this was to help try to balance the budget, when those capital requests came in, we were uh, going to, at that point, be able to help out with the, uh, uh, the town budget and use some capital monies with the idea of trying to replenish that and maintain roughly about uh, uh, roughly about a million dollars in there. So if in the wintertime you had all of a sudden a plow truck go down that could not be repaired, you could come and uh, even if you had to hold a special town meeting and you have the money there and you can replace it. And... Uh, so that was the idea of trying to keep roughly about the million dollars and yeah, spend it out, no question about it, when you were in a situation where it was either to help balance the budget or emergency um, projects or equipment replacement and then try to roughly keep about a million dollars in there. That was my understanding of trying to establish a, a capital uh, stabilization fund. And obviously, you know, people can have different views of it. And as we're, as you've talked about, do we at this point need to really, uh, you know, develop a criteria and, and some financial policies with this fund? That's, that's to be determined. With I think the question group. of criteria has come up because criteria is how you decide what projects you're going to, how you're going right. to, I'm sorry, what projects you want to pursue and how those projects get paid for. And so that's part of what those criteria can encompass. But keep in mind, this has been mentioned three times. We've got major building repairs, major infrastructure that needs to be addressed. And so if we yep. don't start figuring out the plan and <coughs> taxpayers can't take that entire thing on. I really don't think it's possible. I think there's going to have to be borrowing involved because on the one hand, you want a million dollars. On the other hand, you're looking at more than a million dollars just this year. And that's with us trying to show you projects that are going to be ongoing and, and start to build the, build the idea of, of, you know, framing these big infrastructure and other types of projects uh, on the radar screen so everybody sees how we're going to need to start thinking about funding. Right. Casey, to, to your point, if I can just use an example here, several years ago with the senior center, just for the exterior brickwork to bring that up to snuff, I believe there was a price for the exterior just the brickwork on the exterior of that senior center was a million dollars. So a million dollars sounds million like- dollars. Go ahead. Pardon? Sorry. Go ahead. Finish your comment and I'll comment. No, but I, I, I was just going to say a million dollars sounds like a lot of money in a stabilization fund, but uh, you know that can go very quickly as Casey was pointing out, we have some pretty big projects coming down the road here and a million dollars can go in a blink of an eye. Thank you. The issue I have is that we keep 
Um, we have a lot of things that need doing and we have a lot of ideas and we keep excluding them. Um, so we voted ourselves CPA however many years ago and that raised our <coughs> taxes. And then we have the sewer project, which is big um, and that's debt excluded. And part of it at 75% of it is gonna be paid by users all of whom are tax, well, many of whom are taxpayers also. So even though it's not taxes, it's still out of our <coughs> And then we're going to do a library and then we're going to do a senior center and then we're going to do Leary Lot and, and payment. So if we have funding in hand that can help with some of that, for example, using the CPA funds to cover anything that CPA is to cover and using these stabilization funds, I would be very open to that myself. I also, Julie, that's that's a very good point, and I don't, I don't have a problem with with using using the funds that we've been putting away or leveraging it for, you know, debt exclusion. I'm not real big on debt exclusion. I know it saves the town money, but it kind of actually, it actually hides hides uh, the tax rate a little bit. Can I can I interject here? We need debt exclusion. What debt exclusion allows us to do, and the only thing that it allows us to do, is to not put that debt payment into that two and a half percent that we can increase the taxes, property tax. We should be over and above that. And the problem that we have, I mean, I don't have a problem. I don't, you know, you can do that. And we've done that in the past. And then we run around pulling our hair out saying, how can we fund these things? And a good example of that was when we bought the Oxford property that was never debt excluded. So the whole damn thing was paid for out of the general fund without ever raising taxes. And, you know, salaries were not, weren't allowed to rise reasonably, other expenses, the buildings that we've got that we need to make repairs Repairs were never done. So Skip, to your point, it does allow us to preserve the operational growth availability by debt excluding. Absolutely. And if, you, and if it's too much, then I suggest that you just try to cut expenses. But to, to, to bypass debt exclusion uh, is just it's the wrong way of doing things. It's a tool in the toolbox and it's a useful one. Um, I've seen it work very well. And so to Skip's point, it does allow us to maintain the service needs that the town, that, that we project through our regular omnibus budgets. I don't think I was advocating not ever debt excluding anything. What I was saying is if you look at this capital stabilization fund, for example, that's not going to be used to pay for raises for somebody. It's for right. capital stabilization. Okay. Um, Having it is very valuable. Mm -hmm. um, leveraging it is also very valuable because, like I said, you've got, we really should be on a capital rolling capital borrowing plan now that we've really identified how much we need to fix you know some of that bigger stuff that needs to get done yeah. creating that rolling capital borrowing can be very useful to keep the projects moving um and, and not getting bogged down in how are we going to pay for it and so to the point that everybody's making about continuing to put money away in capital stabilization that makes total sense if there's some relief from the draw on those funds over a period of time, then that commitment is easier to make. And so financial policies can also help us sort of craft our approach. Well, so this is Trevor. I just, 
so I know that there are major sidewalk issues, like at least in s some areas that we really should start to address. And would it would it be beneficial? Just a thought would be to cut that bill in half and just at least start on the ones that we know are really damaging, really in bad shape, um, and at least get a portion of that stuff going in the first year. And then while we wrap in a larger plan for downtown and all, um, I mean, is it worth starting to do some of that bill in this year with capital stabilization that we have? I think the townspeople would be ecstatic if they saw we even did a mile of sidewalks. I know. If we just started. That's our number one complaint. Number one complaint. Yes. Constant. I agree, Trevor. Whatever it's worth. I mean, in that way, we could do a, a half of it this year and then get a better plan for do we really need to finish, you know, where, where else do we really need to attack next year? And maybe we could get a subgroup of this group together to say, okay, let's do a walk and tour and just kind of figure out what is the most bang for the buck to knock out the things that aren't really going to tie into a downtown revitalization, but are, are mainly just like, okay, from the senior center to, you know, to the high school, let's just do that this year and then move over to the next side of the road and do a small section or a section of that. I would feel more comfortable about doing that. Um, I would hate to see perfect be the enemy of good here. Yeah. Um, we've been talking a lot about, you know, how we're going to fund these things, whether that be capital stabilization or through a debt exclusion. And I, I think that we just need to take a harder look at some of these expenses. I mean, we're not out of the, out of the woods with COVID yet. You know, if, if our property taxes, you know, go up too much, you know, I, I think that that could have a really negative impact on, on folks. Um, with COVID, uh, coupled with the fact that, you know, DLN um, just re recently released a port, uh, report showing that the um, <clears throat> consumer price index has gone up 2.6%, you know, people are going to start feeling stretched, I think, mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're doing too much spending coupled with the state of the economy right now. So I, I think, you know, if, if we kind of scale back some of these projects a little bit, um, you know, I think we'll be, we'll be better off. Hey, Trevor, this is Denise. Yeah. I had a question about, so, you know, we've been talking about taking back, I guess, 116 from the state and are, mm -hmm. are we responsible? Are they responsible for the sidewalks or are we? Which, which ones do you mean? Uh, um, Sugarloaf. Sugar oh, Sugarloaf Street. Yes. Uh, uh, the state is responsible for, for those from what I've been aware, been notified. I, I assume they are. I mean, that's been the rumor. <laughs> I've never had well, anybody I say. Mean, oh, they yeah. are responsible for this. Oh, okay. okay. So then the question is, and you know, I don't, since I don't live downtown, I don't really walk downtown. I mean, I don't know what, what's the disrepair of the sidewalks along Sugarloaf and why aren't we getting on the state? I mean, that's oh, we a are. question. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Denise, but we've had so, meetings. We've had okay. meetings and they have a commitment. They actually, it's in the bond bill, in the transportation okay. bond bill. They've already set aside money. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it's supposed to be bid out. I'm not sure right. if it's bid out this fiscal year, but the money has already been appropriated through mm -hmm. the transportation bond bill that was just approved a few months ago. Okay. And they are supposed to be doing this, the Sugarloaf sidewalks, as well as up upgrading all the infrastructure and, and then repaving. And then we're supposed to take over the okay. street. Okay, so obviously we would not be repairing those sidewalks. Correct. We would be repairing right. the other sidewalks. Yeah. Okay, just North Main just, Street, Elm Street. Okay. One thing, and Denise, um, they Main do street. this, that bond bill, they do mm -hmm. a rolling bond, like what mm -hmm. we were talking about that they pick out certain areas they're gonna do work at. Like right. last year they did the handicap access areas along Grave Street and a couple of other areas on Sugarloaf mm -hmm. Street. And that was part of a project where they did these small things in about five towns. So yeah. they, oh. they leverage their ability to do mm -hmm. this stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. No, I was just, I was just commenting. I mean, I'm, I know I'm new, <laughs> new to this committee, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, just listening to everyone. I mean, I really like the idea of, you know, instead of piecemealing, talking about thing, projects individually, looking at the whole and really what the vision mm -hmm. of the downtown is. And, you know, we were talking about a planning board. We were talking about Braeburn and possible senior housing. I mean, I can, you know, envision having the senior housing there. And also, I think it's a great idea combining the senior center 
and the library instead of piecemealing that and taking money from the state. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, if the gap is so big, we'd be better off doing it ourselves yeah. and designing it ourselves mm -hmm. for our own needs rather than you right. know, to do a subscription of their need, you know, what to meet their program to get yeah. their money. We also talked about, I, I know we've talked about this before the planning board. I have a problem with calling it a senior center. I think it should be just called community center. Okay. Because even though I'm a senior, it's, you know, it's like. Yeah, but yeah. we would be so, trying to get senior center money. Well, okay. So, so senior like library money. There's right. no community center money. Okay. Then call it senior center. Yeah. So, so, so let's just try and how we can get the money. Moving back to this 300 or 250,000. Uh, yeah. I mean, do we want to say 300? Because I don't know where the cutoff is. Do we want to just put a $300,000 number on doing sidewalks this year paid out of, um, uh, out of the capital stabilization? And then, you know, we'll, we could get, again, a group of us together to kind of figure out where we want to do this and move forward on, on maybe it's 225,000. I'm not sure where the number is, but. Um, I know we had some estimates and it was broken out so we could get together and kind of hash that out. But just, and again, we don't have to spend it all, but we could uh, allocate, you know, up to 300,000 of, of capital stabilization on sidewalks. That was never the purpose of the capital stabilization fund. And if you want to go that route, why not use general stabilization? I'm happy to use either one. If I can get sidewalks done, <laughs> good either. How way. much are the sidewalks going to cost us? Well, we've got 503 figured for asphalt. We do need to do a mixture of some concrete at the step, you know, at, at a corner, and then mostly asphalt is what kind of this this committee, the the, the finance our capital committee had kind of recommended. There's so places think, where it is helpful to have concrete do your yeah. transition, especially for accessibility. Right. So be a mixture, but but I, I, or or we just move forward with a you know with a with a debt. But I, I think like a lot of people have said, we do have a good chunk of money here. We could move forward with either. You know, I thought the capital was for kind of capital stuff in general was for if we ran into a huge problem with with. Uh, I don't know, something else in town that was more um, more of an emergency kind of thing. It, well, in both cases, I would focus on the word stabilization. Uh, the intent of the capital stabilization was to stabilize our annual ex our annual appropriations for capital. Mm -hmm. I guess that was my understanding. Casey has mentioned. We do not have a policy, and I agree, we need a financial policy. One thing I would say is keep in mind that where towns own roads, those are, and Brenda can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think roads and sidewalks and buildings and all these things that are, although some are flat and some are horizontal, they're still capital assets. And so that's something that that's in the back of my mind. I don't know that everybody always, I've got a little voice in my head that says these things to me, but you know, maintaining that capital asset because it's a, tr it, it's a public space. And so for the public good, and Denise will remember that comment from last night, um, for the public good, maintaining that capital asset could be done either way. Um, putting some money aside to do that um, you guys have already started that process, whether you just determine that a sidewalk is not a capital asset or not. I do believe that that's one thing that the state tells us is in fact a capital asset, but regardless where you take the money from, if we start to put, put that money towards it, it, it goes toward providing a better public good for the mm -hmm. townspeople. Can I just mention something else about the sidewalks? Sidewalk, Dangerous sidewalks violate federal law protecting people with disabilities. So it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. There, I mean, I was just Googling. Yeah, we've been warned. So I yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're well aware of that, but. No, it's good, good point. Yeah. Well, I've tried twice. <laughs> you know, 
you may you may also want to go back and take a look at your language i think you may want to go back and take a look at your your language as far as your bylaw goes and see if you are in a situation where sidewalks do uh qualify for or capital uh skip's point that he mentioned because because I think it comes down to interpretation again, but, you know, we've got a situation of acquisition of land for a public purpose, any construction of a new facility or an addition to or an extension of an existing facility, any infrequent rehabilitation or major repair of a building, its grounds or related equipment providing the cost of $25,000 in a 10 year life, more than 10 year life. Any purchase of any fixed asset provided the cost is 10,000 or more in any planning, feasibility, engineering or design study related to any of the above capital projects. Uh, I, does, the, does the question come now does sidewalk asphalt sidewalks fit into any of those categories? Yes. Yes, I would say yeah. so. Tom Scanlon would say it's a fixed asset. Yeah, it is. For sure. It yeah. is. Well, that's why that's why I just want clarification to make sure that's everybody's the term. comfortable Thanks, John. with it. All right. How about this? Let's talk about the other two items and then come back. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> the, um, sidewalks. So municipal offices. PD paving, what's PD? Police department paving? Yep. Um, does anybody want to say anything about that? that I'm going to throw a wrench, in, a monkey wrench into everybody's works. Um, but this is actually becoming, we're starting to see it rise, raise its ugly head um, as a problem. Um, I do think it's something we can't put off too long, even though I understand we have the connection to the senior center parking spaces but i'm starting to see people a lot of people at the town hall so as we move into sports seasons and sports activities we're going to see a lot of people around the town hall and it is making it we've also had a lot of activity with our details for the police department because we've got road work all over the place and mostly five and ten as you may have noticed um, so it, it's actually starting to put a stress on our ability to, to hit capacity for parking and access. I still don't want it done though, until we have a plan for the general area. Cause otherwise I agree, money. I agree, but it's something I just want to remind people that this is, that it, it isn't going away. No, we no, we didn't say it did, but we still have to look at a, a, a plan where we're going to put senior housing, I mean, uh, senior center parking, what we're doing with that whole library, area. senior center, church. Mm -hmm. That's actually a conversation that Kevin and I had several weeks ago. How are we going to put all and this? So this is a vision thing. I'll just stand on my soapbox for a minute. Um, so if we're going to connect all the dots and really take that whole planning project, how to connect the community needs, whether they're mm -hmm. senior, the library, you know, having the church as a, as a, uh, a useful town building and how we connect all of that space together is really important. And Carolyn makes an, a really strong statement. Let's have a plan. That's exactly what we need because parking is at a premium in downtown anyway. And so if we figure out how to best use those spaces, that's a great way to do it. On the other hand, we do have some parking stresses right now. <coughs> We'll get by a few more months, but I think if in the fall, we should look at this again. Um, in the meantime, working with, um, trying to get working with uh, Berkshire Design to kind of get that figured out. And I know working with John and he, he would like to bring in another entrance specifically only for the police department, kind of through between where we cut down the two trees in the front there um, that would give them access and separated access to the police department so they wouldn't be zipping around the building they would just be you know with all the kids running around and stuff obviously they're careful but if they're running out to a you know a very dangerous call or something it would be great to have them have 
specific access only for the police department in and out right to Conway Street. So I think that's the idea for there. And then how, and, and we could break that out and just focus on that and then plan on, you know, the rest of the building, the rest of the town offices and stuff a little later on if you want, but maybe we could get that plan figured out by the fall. Makes total sense. How about the building inspections electronic archiving? Honestly, I think we, we've got much more pressing, pressing issues. Don't tell Bob I said that. <laughs> Don't tell Bob I said that. If he gets permitting software, he'll be happier. Yeah, sure. Okay. And the Frontier Regional, possibly from e and I think, I think we'll find out how that meeting goes tonight, but I think maybe by the next time we get together, that, that might be a nice treat that we won't have to worry about. Trevor, quick question. Yep. Uh, with the duck cleaning, does that, does that qualify for any uh, federal or state grant money as far as, as COVID and, and quality? It, it may. Uh, I, I know that, um, I know Darius is, I was probably looking at that. I know that they're looking at from E and D, but there may be a, a mixture of funding for that. Um, they have is, ESSER is, funds coming down too. Yeah, they have more ESSER coming down. ESSER two. And ESSER is I mean, just an acronym for it, a different funding source for schools. Yep. Right. It just looks like it'd be a perfect fit. Yep. It is. It is, Jeff. Yeah. It's okay. kind of the. It, it's not the duck inside cleaning it's all the outside of it it's just kind of like black and nasty up top but it is respiratory right you know if it's that stuff yes. kind of falls down on the kids yes. yep it's air quality you're yes. trying to improve air quality yep yep so working up from the bottom frontier regional is going to be from e and d we hope we hope Building inspections, electronic archiving, we're going to save it for another year. We're definitely not going to do it this year. Capital stabilization, we're not going to add to this year. Police department paving, we are not going to address now. We're going to save that for when there's a big plan and maybe tackle it in the fall. Some sort of big plan borrowing and whatever. We're going to skip the sidewalk for a second. Office file server, we're going to use the reserve fund this year um, to fund it. The website conversion has already been moved to contracted services and already voted in the budget. Action permitting software is going to be done from CARES Act funding. Municipal office repairs will be done using this building fund. Mm -hmm. Senior center needs assessment, <coughs> two Deerfield Elementary projects. Um, those three are going to come from, those are going to be capital projects this year. The police department is going to come out of an ARPA fund. The multi-purpose loader is going to come um, in the budget this year as a capital project. And then the first four we've already talked about. So that leaves just the sidewalk. So Trevor has proposed that we put, say, 100000 in this year's budget and then do 150,000 out of the capital stabilization fund. Is that what you said? Trevor? Sure. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I don't care how it's split up, but I just thought we should tackle, you know, maybe 250 of it this year just to get started on the project. So that would take our free cash instead of 300,000, we would have 237-ish. Yeah, 237,000. Is that? Um, which, is, which is very comparable to what we've left on the table the last two years. Yes. It's a lot less than we've had in the past, but um, we've we've been, I mean, there's never been any issues. So, I, I mean, I think this is the more no, new normal we don't need to have five or 600,000 sitting around doing nothing. I think having a smaller amount makes sense. So I'm thinking about how to do this since we're having a big joint meeting. 
like normally the select board presents a plan to the finance committee and then the finance committee votes on it. So um, would the select board like to? I make a motion to uh, propose this um, payment sources or sources of, pay of, of funding for the capital budget. I'll second that motion as presented here in the spreadsheet. All those in favor? I, Carolyn. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. Motion passed, 300. I better save it. <laughs> Dave, um, I was, Dave. Julie, I was going to ask, Julie, uh, I was going to ask, could, could you please send everybody a copy of that? Yeah, so absolutely. The capital, yep. the capital Improvement Committee would at least have that when we Dave, attend the uh, annual meeting. Yes, and and Dave, we the select board was waiting to vote on the potential for using ARPA funding for the police um, HVA system. Um, so I would make a motion um, that the select board would support um, ARPA funding for the police station HVAC um, expenditure of $100,000, estimated $100,000. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Sure. Casey, the fact that Casey had some discussion. No, anything. you guys, the, my problem with this is this is grant funds. Yep. And generally, you get approval from town meeting to expend grant funds. It doesn't normally yep. show up in a regular capital plan because you're not using town funding. Right. Well, we're, and that money is going to come through. If it comes through and we can do this, that money is going to come through before town meeting. Right. We are under last year's town meeting um, grant approval right. until June. 30. I just want to I want to be clear that we're not putting this into the capital warrant article. Correct. Right. And so we are we are indicating that we are supporting the ARPA source of money, which is supposed to be here in the next week or two. All those in favor? Hi, Hi Carolyn. Dave Wolfram. Pass three zero zero. All right. So I'll make a motion just to get it out there for discussion that for the finance committee um, for the plan as presented on the spreadsheet that we're all looking at. Before you do that, I have one other item that I haven't, that I wanted some information on before we vote this. Uh -huh. Specifically, maturing debt what what is the number for maturing debt at the moment? That's seven ten fifty nine hundred. It's uh, four hundred and eighty three thousand six hundred and fourteen. Okay, what are we doing about repaying the loan that we have for the New England Bakers project three hundred and fifty eight thousand? We are rolling that over at this point. And There's been no discussion of that. There's Is that what we want to do? Continue to roll over this debt? Well, I thought we discussed that a little while back, didn't we? We did. Yeah. We did at one of the but finance I, committee meetings when we talked about it. We did. We but did. I think, um, I mean, our goal, Skip, is, is um is to go out with the RFP. We do have some interest in it. We'd love to have that, you know, sold by the by the time you know next year rolls around and that debt shows up. I'm waiting on the appraisal, Skip. That it's debt. I don't care what you're planning to do in the future. I mean, we bought it and we the decision not to uh, do a debt exclusion on it was well. There's no need to do that because we're going to sell this off in the next few months. How long ago was it that we bought this property back? Uh, about a year or two. Is it two? My how time flies. Yeah. We're having fun. Yeah. No, it's it's no been no fun. We've we've run into issue after issue on that property. It, it, but I think but it's it's not a, it's not a problem. The only problem that I have is that we're not we're ignoring it. Well, I, I, no, we talked about it, you know, quite a bit last other I, I have been harassing Casey 
constantly that we got to yeah, get PC. this on the market. We got to get the RFP <laughs> out. We have people that want to buy it. This is, makes me so angry that we haven't been able to get it sold yet. <laughs> well, been, not been one person's there's, fault. There's the interest payment, which is give or take four thousand dollars a year, that is coming out of that our our tax our ability to increase taxes, and it's that that's the argument that I've made before is that. You know, it's the kind of thing that needs to be debt excluded. And I'm not suggesting that we go back and debt exclude it now. But it's we need we need to do something with these things. And if we're not gonna sell it immediately, we need to pay something down on it. Whether it's fifty thousand. Remember we got into a problem a few years ago with with the Oxford property in general, because we bumped up against that seven year window, which is now ten. And we had to roll it over in bond yeah. of some sort. Ban, yeah. Yep. The interest that we will be paying on the New England Natural Bakers property in fiscal 22 is $1,314. In interest. In interest, yeah. yeah. And, no, and no capital. Correct. No. Or no principal, excuse me. Correct. That's a problem, in my opinion. Only if we don't have a plan, and we do. I think we don't have a plan. No, we do. <laughs> we just haven't been a part of the plan. That's the only problem. No, we do. Uh, we we have interested parties. We're waiting on an appraisal because we have to have one to sell it. And um, we, we did get all the easements done, the survey done. We've got to get two lots that now that's broken into lots. We got to get those out on the market, and I think you know that I know Casey's been working on that. Appraisals have been going crazy because of how much demand there is and how many properties are selling out there. Every, seven firms. Awful storm. It took What's seven that? firms to get somebody to commit. Yeah, it's been awful. I mean, it's been crazy. It's it really is. It's been crazy. But we'll we'll get there. What's worse is the law is crazy. It forces yeah. us to have some. And I, I, this is my frustration because the law forces us to have a definite idea of this, the amount the property is worth one way or another, you have to have a document that shows that. Would you like me to write one off? Thank you. <laughs> I would love it, Skip. <laughs> Just not zero. <laughs> right. All right, I'm gonna get another shot. I move that we um, approve the plan as shown on this spreadsheet. I'll second that, Julie. Um, okay. Um, we can discuss it, now that we've been doing it all night. John Paturic, go ahead. Yes, I'd like clarification on this plan because mm -hmm. the plan includes 18 items for a priority. Are we gonna limit it to uh, say, for example, Items uh, one through 13 and only do part of number 14 because we're certainly not voting 15, 16, or 17, or 18. So it seems like we're just throwing out there saying, yeah, let's approve the plan, but yet there's no clarification on the plan. So, how far are we, what priorities do we have down to what number? So we, um, how about if I do highlight maybe? Because um, we're also not doing number 13. Right? Or, all right. Um, so, you ask me for my opinion, I'd rather go down to number 12. I'd rather take the $12,000 for number 13 out of our. Uh, they will our fund for the finance committee for this year and take care of that and then forget number 14 all the way down. How about um, we vote each line? That's a better way to do it. All okay. right. I propose line item one wastewater treatment plant upgrades debt excluded for 5 million seven twenty four thousand. Second. So we can we're gonna vote oh. each one 
We're going to vote each one. Yep. All right, I second that. Uh, John Petrori beat you to it. Any discussion? Oh, I need my list of names. All right, um, roll call vote. John Pareski. Aye. John Petrick. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Six zero zero. We have a motion for the second item. I'll move. make a motion that the roadside mall will be uh, funded through reimbursement. I'll second it. All right. Any discussion? Nope. We'll call vote. John Pareski. Aye. John Paterik. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Billy Chalfin. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Six zero zero. Third item. Um, can we do this third and fourth together? I'll yes. make a motion that the twenty five thousand for asphalt paving for skims and thirty thousand for exhaust system for skims be funded by the skims rent stabilization fund. I'll second it. All right. Any discussion? Uh, roll call vote. John Pareski. Aye. John Paterik. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julia Chalfin. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Six zero zero. Uh, line item five. Six. Uh, five. Multi-purpose loader. Um, I'll make a motion to approve a five-year lease pay for the. Uh, Wacker Newton WL 32F multi purpose loader. I'll, I'll second that. that. All right, any discussion? Brenda? Yeah, I just wanted to point out that that will now be in Kevin's budget instead of in, in you know, as a, as a capital item, it'll be in his budget as a lease item. Did we do we need to revote his budget or is that already in his budget? We will need to revote his budget. Yeah, it's still gonna the money is still gonna end up basically what we're talking about here, but it needs to be in a different spot. Okay. I withdraw the motion. And I'll withdraw my second. Okay. So we're going to skip line item five. Line item six is going to be through ARPA funding. So we do not need to vote that, right? Is that true? Because it won't show up on the budget? Yeah, it won't show up on the budget. Right. All right, we're going to skip line item six. Line items seven and eight. Do we have a proposal for those two together? I'll move seven and eight. $33,300. Is that Deerfield Elementary School uh, capital items? I'll second that. Yes. I guess it's actually, is it 15, three, and 18? No. In three. Oh. 21 2. This was last year. Okay. So it should be 36,500 then. 36,500. Yep. I'm sorry, do we have a second? Yeah. I'll, I'll second, second it. it. The, uh, right. the restroom renovations and the flooring, total of 36,500. Okay. Um, any discussion? Oh. No. See no hands. Um, John Pareski. Aye. John Paterik. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julie Chalf and I, Jim Cambius. Aye. Six zero zero. So we're up to line item nine, which is the senior center needs assessment. 
I'll make a motion the senior set of needs assessment feasibility study for 42500 be funded by a capital item and the warrant. Did I say that right? Sounds good. Yep. And I will Jeff second that, Jeff. All right. Any discussion? Nope. Okay. John Pereski. Aye. John Paturic. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julie Chalf and I, Jim Cambius. Aye. 600, line item 10, municipal office repairs. Make a motion I'll make a motion that the municipal. Go ahead, John. Okay. Go ahead, John. Make a motion. I'll make a motion that the municipal office repairs be funded from the municipal building fund for 52,118. Do we want to mention DA helping as part of the motion? Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll second that. I second it, Jeff up there. All right. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? John Pereski. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julie Chalf and I, Jim Cambius. Aye. Six zero zero line item eleven. Uh, we're going to skip because that's CARES Act funding. Line item twelve is in contracted services. We don't need to vote that. Line item thirteen will be out of FY twenty one reserve fund funding, so we're going to skip that. Line item fourteen. I'll make a motion that two hundred fifty thousand dollars to be used for asphalt sidewalk repairs, concrete sidewalk repairs. Uh, 100,000 be funded from a capital uh, budget item on the warrant and 150,000 from the capital stabilization fund for a total of 250. We have a second. I'll, sec I'll second it, Jeff Upton. All right, do we have discussion? Nope. No. Okay. John Pereski. Uh, Julie, just make Aye. sure you note that that's going to need a two thirds vote for the stabilization. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to note it in the warrant too. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Any other discussion? No. John Pereski. Aye. John Paturk. Aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Skip Olmstead? Nay. I figured. Julie Chalfin, aye. Jim Gambius? Aye. So that's a five zero five one zero. One that passes. Um, and that's it. The other four we are not addressing this year. Or at this point, it could come back in the fall. Correct. Right. All righty. We you. still have one reserve fund transfer that we need to address this evening. Is there anything else we want to talk about regarding this plan? Oh, no. I, I'd like to go back to what Casey said earlier that we need to formalize how we're going to use capital stabilization money and we ought to put together a plan and a criteria. And I don't know if we want to do a little subcommittee to put something together or because I think if but do we meet individually or any thoughts, Casey? But I think we need to do it. I agree with you. Um, I think we could do a subcommittee and sort of draft something up and then bring it back for a larger discussion. I don't think um, it needs to be hugely detailed right away because as you learn to do it, it's going to become easier. And, and but um, I do think that utilizing some examples of other town other small towns like us could be helpful and that's maybe the place for a subcommittee to start and so maybe it should be a member of finance a member of the select board and a member of capital how about if you put a, a draft together for us since you have experience casey with this you and brenda go over it and uh, that would be my and i'm not trying to push off push this off on you uh, no you just but, hate me i get it that's okay, I understand that. You, yes. Um, I do remember no, that, that makes sense. I do remember that I think Jeff Upton had brought back 
um, you know, some good examples. I don't know if it was the town of Littleton or. Yeah, uh, I think it was. Was, that was that was John Pereski. Uh, oh, he oh, did okay. Northboro. He oh, yeah. the North Northboro. Prince. Yeah, the great, great examples there. It seems like they do a very good job and, and they had a great plan that kind of stretched out a lot of years and good, good policies. So I recommend. Looks like you're going to have to talk to me, John. <laughs> Put the that over. I've got copies of that, I think, somewhere. Okay. Oh, boy, I don't know where it is. Well, you could just contact the. the uh, I'll find it. Person in Northboro. If you okay. can't find it, Trevor, I believe I may have saved a copy of that myself. Yeah, I know I've got some hard copies here. Okay. So we don't need to do this right this second, right? Correct. I was kind of thinking like after town meeting. Don't. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's definitely on the to-do list, but not right this second. Anything else we do need to talk about tonight? I have a question. So I need everybody to sit down and yell at me about the comp plan. Ooh. And I'm wondering if we could do that next week. Sure. How about I really the expect to have to have fla a flak jacket for Skip. <laughs> we have a comp plan? We have a draft transition plan, Skip. And that was what we worked really hard with Mary Accardi to come up with. And so she, get, I, if you check your email, if you want to print out, I can, I can print a copy out and leave it out in the foyer for you. But she gave us a report and she basically gave us a transition plan that allows us to lessen the, in, the what could be substantial cost for some equity adjustments for some positions that came out of the classification review and also provides stretches out the percentage increases in, and this is my layman's terms very simply, stretches out the percentage increases in the step, but also in the steps, but also allows us a little bit of latitude in terms of um, COLA. So I'd be happy to sit down and talk to you about it if you want individually, but I'm hoping we could talk about it next week. I, I was trying to get personnel to have a meeting too. They've heard two presentations on this. The select board had a presentation last week, um, but really seeing the numbers would be helpful because the ultimate recommendation is to do this transition. We've got, I can't remember how many Brenda, but there's several people that need an equity adjustment because in comparison to other if five, I couldn't remember the number. Um, anyway, the point is, is we need to talk about it um, I would like to do that next week. It's a doable plan. The costs are spread. It's an equitable plan for everybody. And, but we need to have that conversation. And I think it would make sense to have it with personnel, the select board and finance committee as the, the main decision makers because of the money that it's the lift that's going to be in terms of money. I don't know if I can get all of personnel there. And, and this is my shout out to John Pereski. <laughs> can you do Tuesday, John? Uh, um, next week? They're willing to come meet with everybody so that we can have this chat. Well, we, we have a finance committee meeting scheduled for next Tuesday anyway. Exactly. That's what I'm really asking is whether I can get the board there and at least three members of the personnel board there. Well, I'll be there because I'm on the finance committee, so. One down. Maybe I can get I can more. be there. You're talking the 18th, you said? Yes. Okay. I can do it. Yeah, we'll be there. What okay. time are you thinking? Um, it's, you guys have it. You're, me, sorry, Julie, I'm tripping over my words because my brain is trying to process something. Five o'clock? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we would have finance committee, the okay. regular finance committee meeting, right? Yep. All right. Okay, so a joint meeting. I will send an email out once we're done and beg everybody to come. But Skip, if you check your email, I did send two reports out. I sent one on Friday, I sent one today. Um, I'm happy to print it out and I'm happy to chat with anybody who wants to chat with me. I just need to figure it out in terms of a schedule. But really this could help us implement some of the equity adjustments that we need to make but also stretch the plan so it's more sustainable over the next 
10 to 11, maybe 12 years. That's kind of a long time for a compensation plan. It's 10, it's 10 to 12 steps, but there's an equity adjustment in the first one. I, I thought we review them every five years. It's supposed to be reviewed every five years. It would be. They don't have to be. Yeah. It would be. It, it would be, be but reviewed. it would be the the step in the step increments is right. really the, the ten is twelve. Yeah. All right. There's I think there's actually I can't remember if it's ten steps or twelve steps. Oh. But keep 12. in mind the first year. So FY twenty two would be the transition. Just like AA. Twelve step plan. Basically, did you? Do you want to cover the revert, reserve fund transfer? Yeah, we do. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we approve the reserve fund transfer for nine hundred dollars. Second. Any discussion? I got a question on it, but you can't give me the answer, so I'd say let's just vote it. What was it for? Just. It was it was the overage for the energy. It's the locust hill bill, oh, gotcha. which was not anticipated. Thank you. Right. So I'm just curious about how they got roped into a contract and somebody handed this contract information off to somebody else and says, "Here, pay this eight hundred fifty dollar bill." So that's my only question, but I'd rather just vote this because I know nobody can answer that question. Thanks. Right. Any other discussion? No. John Presky. Aye. John Patrick. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julia Chalfin. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. I'm. So, I didn't write down who seconded that. Oh, I seconded. It. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough. Yeah. That passes six zero zero. Are you ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second. All right, John Presky. I didn't hear what we're voting on. Adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> John Patrick. Hi. Jeff Upton. Hi. Skip Bonestead. Hi. Uh, Julie Chaff and I, Jim Gambius. Hi. Uh, Adjourn at 7.08 p.m. Any business? Thank you. Any make business? A motion for the Good night. Good night. I make a motion for the select board to adjourn. We're all set, Casey. No other, nothing else you need? Okay, great. I'll make, I'll second that motion. Thank you. <laughs> hey, any discussion? <laughs> None. Oh, yeah. All those in favor? Hi, <laughs> Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolfer. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice evening. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Alex. Everybody. Really Thank good to have you help me do this. Members. I'll see you in the, the morning, IPC case. members, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make, I make that motion. Ms. Carolyn. And up, uh, Jeff, you're second? Yes. Okay, all in favor. Jack Davey, aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Carolyn Ness? Aye. Mark Brennan? Aye. Denise Mason. Aye. And we are adjourned at 7.09 p.m. <laughs>